You know, there, there's, there's, you know, if you would ask me this question ten years ago, you know, you can talk about the, you know, his character as a man and, you know, graduation rates and things like that. But nowadays, at this point, in college football, there's one thing that you judge by, and that's wins. Mm -hmm. You know, and right now, you know, this past year didn't do that. Um, and, 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 and I know that he knows that he, that must be addressed. You know, there is no other category that matters in college football. And anyone tell you that, well, it's lying. Um, he, he has to win. We have to get a quarterback, and we have to we have to win. Mm -hmm. There you have it, people. I got a question from my main man, Mo, over here, man. Do you, I know you, you, we talked about UAB program as far as basketball goes. Do they remind you of your 2014 a little bit, and if so, how? I think just the competitive spirit. Like last night, I've, I've had the opportunity to come to a lot of the home games this season, so... Uh, they're playing hard, they're fighting the whole time, and the crowd, although it hadn't been great uh, every night, the people that are there, you know, they're getting a good product. And that's a testament to the players, their ability to, uh, to go out and compete and their desire to, to win. Cool. Are y'all interested in coaching, either one of y'all? I am not. Uh, <laughs> but, I, but I love basketball, but coaching... Uh, and to be honest, for some of the same reasons Reggie just mentioned, uh, it's judged by winning. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter how you affect the guys in a positive light. I mean, of course, that's part of it, but at the end of the day, if you don't win, uh, I don't think schools and teams care how much you pour into a young man and the, the way that you help shape and mold his, his character isn't always, uh, you know, seen, you know, from, a, I guess, your job security standpoint. You're, you're out the door. Uh, but I still love the game, and I stay close. I actually started a sports consulting business. Uh, it's called One Family Way Sports Consulting. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, you know, we do basketball skills training for younger kids and high school kids and even professional guys that they want to come and work out. Um, do motivational speaking and help pro guys kind of get their stuff together on and off the court. Females also? Anybody. If your granddad wants to play, I'll train him. <laughs> Anybody is welcome. What's the age group where it started? Well, the youngest kid I train right now is six, and the oldest is 16. Okay. Reggie, what you have going on right now, brother? Um, Mike Moore, I, I actually was a head coach at a private school here in, mm -hmm. in Birmingham uh, um, two years ago, and they canceled the program. Dang. Um, but I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoy coaching, and I enjoy, you know, more now very similar, I enjoy the molding of young men. You know, I don't think there's a greater tool than football. Sorry, Mo. Um, <laughs> I don't think there's a greater tool to mold young men than, than the game of football. Um, and you know I agree with that. Yeah. Totally yeah. agree. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just a, to me, it's the last true team sport. It Spit takes it out, everyone. Mo. You want to say something? I've been, I've been around a room full of wrong people before. <laughs> 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 you know, so, um, unfortunately, you know, taking job is, is so... You know, just the, I know we keep harping on it, just the, the, the need to win. Um, it stops you from doing all the intangible things, you know, the things that make me have the relationship that I have with my high school coach. You know, if I was growing up today, um, it would probably be very hard for my coach and I to build a relationship that right. I have um, just because of the, the stress that's put on it. Um, but I do, I do work out with young men. Um, <laughs> work out. I do train young men. Um, I try to be as many mentor as many young kids as I can. Um, and I meet them different ways. It's, um, church, um, meet some through word of mouth, things like that. And um, I will get into um, training and doing some individual field work with things like that. I'd like to know, uh, with you guys, uh, how was y'all transition from pro ball? Great question. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Just, Every day life. Hey. Hey, you, you can say it. Yeah. Hey, man, this is a conversational yeah. show. Yeah. How did y'all go from being superstar to just regular yeah. Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Let me go first because his story is a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> his story is a lot harder. Right? <laughs> right, see, I was, uh, this don't sound strange when I say I was blessed because I was injured. You know, so um, I had three shoulder surgeries in two years. Dang. So there's a, you know, a lot of guys leave the game, they get put out the game. Right. Kicked out. Well, I, you know, technically I did get put out like most people do. Um, but lots of people get put out still believing their mind is strong, right? They still think they can play. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I left, 
Or I knew I physically cannot play this game anymore. So mentally, I had a jump start on a lot of other guys. So I was able to transition, okay, what's next? Turn a chapter in my life, keep rolling. Um, so, you know, something that I thought was a, a curse it ended up being a, a big blessing that I used to catapult me into, you know, the next part of my life. All right. So. Well, yeah, he mentioned the three surgeries. I actually met this guy at rehab. I was injured one year, and we just happened to be injured at the same time. And uh, truthfully, I mean, I'm sure he knows it to some degree. He helped me with the transition. Um, unlike him, this past season in Europe, I was hurt the whole time. I mean, like, kind of like him, I was hurt the whole time. Uh, but it wasn't so much the injuries that kind of forced me out. I just had a desire to be home with my family. Uh, I have a two-year-old son, my wife. Uh, to be honest, she's quite old. She's over Europe. She did not want to go back to Europe. She wanted our son to grow up at here and to be around our family and our friends, which I understood completely. Uh, so when at the end of the season, I knew for sure that I'm not, this is it. Yes, and I actually yes. had, you know, my agent called and said, you want to come back? Are you sure you want to quit? What about January? I said, look, I'm going to be at home. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. I'm actually uh, excited to be at home. I enjoy every day waking up, getting a chance to take my son to school and you know, do breakfast and all of that stuff at home. My wife and I will go to lunch in the middle of the day, which is something I wouldn't be able to do if I were still in Europe. So uh, thank you, because he definitely helped a lot. Um, just from talking to him and the fact that he quit, you know, a year or so before I did, uh, it helped me, you know, a ton. What, what advice would you give to, I guess, high school kids, any kid with the aspiration of playing professional ball, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, what have you, what advice? Uh, that's a great question. I get asked that question all the time. Uh, and there's lots of things I can say, but as, as simply as I can put it, I would tell them to focus on now. Okay? Most people, they don't enjoy, you know, let, let me not generalize. Let me, myself, right? I didn't enjoy high school because I couldn't wait to get to college. You know, and I couldn't wait to, I, I got to college and I didn't enjoy that because I was trying to hurry up and get to end. I wanted to get to NFL, you know. And you miss lots of things. You miss friends. You miss relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and on a, on a lower level, high school level, you know, I, I see so many kids that have the talent, but <laughs> they didn't do their grades. They, right. You know, they, they didn't take care of what, the now, you know. And I tell them all the time, the worst feeling that an athlete can have in high school is for a college coach to come recruit you the first thing he'll ask for is your transcripts. He looks at them and he walks out the door. Mm. You know, um, so take care of them now. Be, be the best physically conditioned, the best student, the best person character-wise that you can be. And, and if you're good enough to play in the league, you will. And if you're not, you won't. But the, the character that you've built, you will be successful in something. So take care of them now. That makes Mo. sense. I don't... I don't know if I have an answer to follow. Uh, <laughs> everything he said, plus, for me, I think athletes need to focus on being willing to work. Mm -hmm. A lot of athletes, you know, particularly basketball players, they kind of like the things that playing basketball brings you. You have to have a, a real love for the game and a willingness to work at the game uh, in order to be successful. Tons of kids now, they're more focused on their brand. They're more focused on Instagram and posting every time they dunk. Uh, but those same kids can't make college level moves or they don't have college level intensity. Uh, we, I'm speaking of, of course, with regards to high school kids that are playing. And uh, you know, they're not willing to work on their games. You have to be willing to sacrifice and work hard on your game. And truly, and to, in order to do that at the level you need to, you have to love the game, not just what the game can bring you. It's the AA ball is messing the game up for basketball in general. Who's messing it up? Uh, AA. Oh, hey, you been, oh, hey, you well, it, it's kind of a necessary evil. Uh, you you love for the kids to get the exposure uh, that AAU basketball and summer basketball allows, you know, provides for them. But at the same time, it's a very, it's a selfish mentality that it also kind of instills in the kids because those kids are concerned about impressing coaches. They may not always necessarily uh, focus on the things that real college coaches will ha do, that they'll have to. Uh, be able to do. You know, for example, teamwork is something that is big in college. You're not going to go out there in college and take 50 dribbles and then take a fadeaway jumper. But in AAU, if you play for a local guy or your dad's the coach or your uncle's the coach, you know, he kind of promotes that and kind of, you know, encourages you to do that, you know, trying to prove that you can show coaches that you can play. Uh, like it's a great tool, but it's also, 
I think it could be, you know, a very, very bad thing for a lot of kids if they don't have the right the right people around them. Now, what I was about to ask minutes ago <laughs> was, <laughs> was I know you said that y'all met, you know, because of y'all injuries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what brought y'all to Birmingham by both y'all being from somewhere totally different? You from Louisiana and you from Opelika. Lafette, man, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm not from Opelika. <laughs> from Lafette, Alabama, man. This interview is over. I know, right? I'm Lafette, <laughs> Alabama, yeah. hometown boy. Uh, to be honest, I know what brought him here. He's, I mean, he's, he's married. His wife brought him here, yeah. so he didn't have a choice. <laughs> go where she want to go. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. But I, I mean, I went to school here, and I think for me, Birmingham is where I grew uh, as a man, or at least the, you know, the, the kind of, the beginning stages of manhood for me. So, of course, I, I loved it here. My wife's from here, like I said before. Uh, it was just, a, it was an easy choice. Man, you got y'all gotta forgive my co uh, my co-host, man. He got that off his Wikipedia page. I'm assuming <laughs> because it's wrong. Update your stuff, Mo Finley. Oh, I, hey man, I'm not in control of my Wikipedia. You should be. I know where I'm born. I know where I'm from. Exactly There's what nothing what on said. Wikipedia that I, that I don't already know. It does say that. Just call it update. That's it, man. Oh. Uh, I got a question. I got a basketball question for you, Mo. All right. You, you, are you aware of the stuff, the backlash that Mark Jackson is getting about what? About, about the comments he made about Steph. With regards, regards to, with, with regards he's to, making basketball bad. Right for the kids. Oh, uh, do are, the, it's not about Mark Jackson. Yeah. Though. Are do you? Do I think he's making basketball bad? No. Do you think the backlash is warranted? I think anytime he says anything about Golden State, it's gonna be media backlash simply because he was their former coach. As soon as he leaves, they win. Right. So like he, he's in a lose lose. Right. Anything he says is gonna be taken out of you know context. So the best thing for him to do, to me, you know, this is just my opinion, is to probably just only say, you know, the obvious about Golden State. They're winning. They're playing well. They're having fun. That's it. Like anything else is gonna be blown way out of proportion. So. Mark got to kind of feel some way about how it, the whole situation went down, though, because, I mean, that was wrong, honestly. Uh, I mean, you can you can say it was wrong to get rid of him, but they, they're winning. Like, so it's hard to kind of say he should have been. Like, he did a good job, but sometimes you just need a little tweak. Teams just need, you know, maybe a different philosophy in one area. But they won 51 games while he was there. I know, but they won the NBA championship when he left. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, look what they're doing now with, with Luke. So you don't think it's culture, you think it's more so them. Exactly. But that could still be a byproduct of the philosophy that's been instilled by Steve Kerr. Like Luke Walton is essentially an, ex an extension of Steve Kerr. Correct. So and the, Kerr will be back Friday. Yeah, and, Ke and, today. and pro guys, they don't always like the coach. They don't, there's certain things, you can get, like Mark, for example, you can go tell a high school kid, run through this wall, we're doing it ten times. An NBA guy, he's making $40 million for two years. You make two for this year. Whoever makes the most money is going to make the decision. So if the players don't like you, they're not going to play for you. And they don't have to because the owners are going to back their investment. I'm going to piggyback off that question. Do you think it was the players that didn't like him, or do you think he was, quote, unquote, too religious? Because, I, you know, he has his uh, yeah. his, um, his religious That's uh, what the media put out there. going on down in L.A., and he would travel back and forth. But they were, Well, I, that I can't speak to. Uh, but I think... What makes you who you are, your you know, your your walk with, with you know God, your religion, that makes you who you are. So I don't think it's wise for people to try to turn that off in order like I wouldn't be willing to turn off my Christianity right. just to suit yeah. you know this because right. that my Christianity, my faith makes me who I am. Right. And my everything that I do is rooted and based in that. Correct. Uh so if that was an issue, they shouldn't have hired him because that's who he is. That that makes him who he is. Right. Does that answer the question? I'm sorry. Mark it, it Jackson, did. don't talk about Golden State. Is <laughs> <laughs> he listen? <laughs> I add him on Instagram, make him listen to it. And, and Red, as, being that you are coming off of coaching, and UAB is kind of, yeah, you know the story behind UAB. Yes. You should. You live in Burke. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what advice, would, being that you're a former pro, Super Bowl winning with them Giants, they beat the Patriots, was that the coldest game ever, too? Man! <laughs> NLC Championship game? That's, that's, that's another question. Green Bay? Yeah. yeah. That's cold as ever, man. You on sleeve? 
Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I, tried, I tried to go out there without him for I, one more. I think it's stupid not to wear sleeves. That's the crazy thing to wear. I see football players with, without sleeves on yeah, in the cold. Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah, I remember Strahan said, he used to laugh at us. Strahan, he was like, when you don't wear sleeves, it don't make you look tough. It just makes you look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but any advice for UAB this year and them transitioning back into football and rifling and bowling? Well, um, football specifically because yeah. you played football. Correct. Well, the, <laughs> I, I, no matter what you're doing, you know, people try to take athletics away from all other walks of life, right? And it, it, it's, it's the same. It's no different. You know, whether you're opening up a restaurant or you're starting a football team, right, it, you first have to have some kind of plan, right? Plan and some passion to fuel that plan. Right. You know, and they, I mean, what they went through to get that team back, I mean, it's obviously passion behind it, right. you know. Um, so the next thing you have, you need leadership, right? Obviously, they have good leadership because he was out in the front. You know, Clark, Clark, I mean, he's, he's, he's leading the way. Um, let me tell you, man, I don't care what, <laughs> what, what venue you're talking about. When you have um, passion and great leadership, I mean, the sky's the limit for you. Mm -hmm. You know, people, people, people are going to start to want to be here. You know, and it'll take a year or two to get it off the ground. Um, but if you just stick with it, and that leadership will stay around, and that passion keeps stays burning, I mean, it's the sky's the limit. You know, they will be <laughs> what the other school thought they were going to be. <laughs> if that makes sense, <laughs> you know, they will grow and they can they can become a giant if they want to. Have you ever had a concussion before? I had plenty of concussions, I, I, I think. That's what they you anyway now. You know, um, the whole movie. No, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, when, when I was playing, like, even at Auburn, you know, like, a lot of times, like, you get, you know, we call them dings. It didn't call right. them concussions. You know, yeah. I got a stinger. You know, they, the terminology was different. You know, and, and you would sit down, you kind of gather yourself, and you go back out there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so for me to tell you how many times that happened, you know, I just wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's, it wasn't something that I paid attention to. Now, I know that sounds strange, given what's all going on today. Um, but it is a huge issue. Um, I am. I, I, I'm very concerned about it. You know, I turned. I'm almost 35, and man, you're a young boy. <laughs> yeah, but not for for banging my head. <laughs> <laughs> See, I just, I just, I just kind of thought years. that they were just overblowing it, like because. In, it's, it's, it's been a proven fact statistically that mm -hmm. soccer, they have more concussions in soccer than they do in football, mm -hmm. but nobody talked about soccer. Well, more, is it more um, documented? Documented, right? Documented you have cases. documentation that you're talking about, and also are you talking about uh, per capita, right? Because there's, you got you to think when you're talking about soccer, you're talking about a world thing. Yeah. Right? So. You, you know, people talking about you know, Super Bowl, the champion of the world. We're the only country that play. <laughs> football, you know? So we're really not the champions of the world. You know what I mean? So we're less than, you know, less than four, about 4% 4 of the world. 96% of the rest of the world plays soccer. You know, so of course they will have more. You know, how is that? You know, what is the per, I would say per group of kids that are playing concussion, I would, get, I would bet that football was more from that aspect. You know, data. You can fix data however you want to make it show whatever you want. You know what I mean? But what I know is these kids, they're bigger and faster and stronger than I ever was. Um, and I'm not sure what to do that, do with that because I, on one hand, I have that information. I know that to be true. On the other hand, it's a game that I love and it has provided great opportunities for me and my family. And my grandkids will benefit from me playing a game of football. So. You kind of have those two things clashing, and then I think that's what's going on in our society right now. Not to mention, you're making billions of dollars doing it. <laughs> so. All right, man, we'll be back. We gotta pay some bills. DJ Bob, DJ Ricky D, you listen to the sports show about nothing, man. We want, I wanted to get into the division of game matchups, man. Uh, Mo, unfortunately, the Cowboys didn't make it. I won't be watching. <laughs> I will. I will not be watching Sunday. Unfortunately, the Cowboys didn't make it. <laughs> and Reggie, unfortunately, <laughs> your Giants didn't either, bro. Yeah, we rough, man. <laughs> <laughs> we rough. So, I mean, give give me a breakdown. I mean, everybody, everybody in here is football fans. So, uh, Mo, I want you to go first. 
Who do you like in these matchups, man? We're going to start with the AFC. With the AFC. With Peyton and Brady. 17. This is the 17th time? This is the 17th time. Probably the last. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you know, this has this is not the question, but aren't you tired of seeing Manning throw ducks and limp out? Like, I'm kind of tired of that. Like, give someone else a chance. You've made tons of money. You've won. You're the greatest, blah, blah, blah. Go home. Yeah. Time to go home. But is he the greatest, though? We had this discussion last time. Regular season quarterback. He greatest yeah. regular season quarterback ever. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I can agree season. with that. Um, for me, I think the Patriots are the Patriots, and like he, I just don't see them beating. It's a machine over there. Yeah, like I don't, I don't see Peyton Manning beating Tom Brady. I think Brady's best is better than Manning's best. But it is better is better than. Yeah. But what y'all fail to realize, which I'm quite sure he's gonna, Reggie's gonna say, is. Broncos defense Crazy. is going against Brady. It's that deep. is the question. It's that is going to be the problem for Brady. Hey man, you still talking about Tom it's still Brady? Brady. Like it's, it's still Brady though. Like I, I agree the defense is, you know, tough, no doubt. But those guys are always really, really well prepared. So Belichick, Brady, I'm picking them. Yeah. <laughs> I can't but see I got them in a running game. Yeah. Yeah. They one-dimensional. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, first of all, I got to take up for a man, right? I love Peyton Manning, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just have a great deal of respect for him, man. His preparation, you know, the things that he knows, I, I know what it takes for him to have that much knowledge. I mean, he is, I've never been around anyone more committed, you know. I remember, I remember one year I was in Miami, we played them. Matter of fact, it was Monday Night Football, I think. And we held the ball for 45 minutes. They only had the ball for less than, they had about 14 minutes and some seconds and they won. All right, he sat on the bench the entire third quarter, literally not, I mean, he literally did not play. Our offense had the ball the entire time. All right, we run a blitz one time. Why we run a zero blitz against him, I have no idea, but I just do what I'm told. Right? As soon as we break the huddle, we haven't even lined up yet, and he starts smiling, All right? He's checking out anyway, throws a jet screen, Pierre Garcon, 60 yards, win the game. Right, he just that kind of preparation. Um, I, I hate it's kind of like watching your superhero go down, you know what I mean? <laughs> I like the whining, I don't like everything that comes with it. So, you agree with Antonio Smith? Yeah, he's one, no doubt about it. Y'all came time. out the same year, also, yeah, yeah, the stat, man. Yeah, stat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I guess it's, it's true, you know, but um, as even with that being said, to, to bet against them would just be silly. He, he, they just find a way. They find mm -hmm. a way. They're prepared. They're prepared. They're prepared. Man, it's, 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 can't beat that. I respect how they're able to plug and play players oh, yeah. as they come. I mean, yeah. when, I, when West, they lost West Welker, I just knew, like, mm -hmm. Danny Amendola is not it. It's but, man, shame. Julian Edelman just came in, and he's even better than West Welker yeah. seemed like. He, at least he's more shittier. Yeah. It, it's crazy. Yeah. You know what a testament that is? When's the last time, I was talking to someone about this, when is the last time the Patriots had a good player that left and play well somewhere else. It's, it's, I can't think of a time. Only, only player I can think of, and I'm a Raider fan. Oh my God. It's um, I mean, he let. Uh, you sound like you're reaching because you didn't say his name. <laughs> 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 I think you're stretching. Offensive player. They don't say Randy. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, 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 don't, don't say Randy. Minnesota. Yeah. Don't say Wait, offensive player. Offensive player, I, I, I totally yeah, agree yeah, with you. Yeah, I totally yeah agree I'm talking offense. You. In that system, because I'm speaking of the offensive, the, the Patriots, Belichick, offensive system. Right? Usually Ocho, just, man. Ocho, no, 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 man. No, no, no. <laughs> he, he didn't get a chance in Miami, though. Hey, God, he didn't get a chance in Miami, though. I had to agree with you. Yeah. Once, once they left, I, know, yeah. I mean. That system makes guys famous, man. It makes them lots of money. Yeah. And that's why they can get guys to go there for less and put up with the system and all the things that people would associate with college right, because they have a proven, proven system that wins championships. Yeah, and they end every year. Every year. Five straight AFC championship games. That's, that's amazing. As long as they have Belichick and Brady in their building, the rest of the guys. When one go, does the other go? That's or do question. you think he can plug and play at quarterback like he does everywhere else? I think nah, quarterback's to. different, man. They thought about every single play that's hard. Yeah. There's only one guy in the league that can do that. That's tough. So they tied to the hip? I you think, think when, when Brady retired, yeah. Belichick going to? Well, you, got, you, you, got, you know, you have relationship things. So 
they know each other. You know, they, I hate to use the analogy, but I mean, I mean, they, they, they really know each other, right? They, they don't have to guess with each other. Thinking, you know, when one of those leads, no matter who it is, whether Brady leads or Belichick leads, you have to get used to another guy, the way they do things. And they may adapt a little bit, but they're going to have their own way. Mm -hmm. You know, and if they're winning, that's fine. But the second they, if, if they ever don't win, <laughs> the top blows off of yeah. them. Because you're not doing like this, and you're not doing, you know. I don't know if Belichick wants to sit around and <laughs> with a subpar quarterback and get his butt kicked every week. I mean, I just, I don't see a reason for either one of them to. So. Just my opinion, though. Hey, Mo, does Cam have enough to get past Arizona? I don't know. I like it. I want Arizona to win because I'm a Larry Fitzgerald fan. Um, but what? Can, I mean, I'm sorry for having. I'm, I'm sorry. An opinion. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We came out together. Stop, I, man. You didn't know that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> man, well, we talking about linebackers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I think Cam has had a, a great season. Uh, what they've been doing. All year long has been, you know, the talk of the NFL. For sure, I think he's the MVP. I don't know if he'll win, uh, but Super I think Bowl, or you mean the MVP. I, don't, I mean, shit, will he win? You know, who has gonna win? The writers are Carson wondering. Palmer. No, no. That's the best is competition. I'm just telling you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Him, him and Brady. This is three, three. Yeah. So if if he doesn't win Sunday, maybe he doesn't get the MVP. Doesn't go to the Super Bowl. Uh, but like, I just like Larry Fitzgerald. I like the, and I don't know him at all. I just like the character he plays on TV. Polite, respectful. Uh, you never hear anything about anything crazy about him. And that's not to say he doesn't do anything crazy. I don't know it. Yeah. I haven't heard it. Um, but with the Carolina's defense and the, the, you know, Cam playing out of his mind all year, it'll definitely be, you know, worth watching. I may peek at it. I mean, Dallas isn't playing, but I, <laughs> I, may, scroll, I may scroll through. Quietly, Fitzgerald put up some of his best numbers ever. Yeah. Give them to him. And you know, I, I root for the 30 year old athlete. I root for the guy who everyone <laughs> says is, you know. Yeah, I root yeah. for that guy, yeah. you know. Because yeah. uh, athletes, you know, professional sports is a young man's game. So it's, it's nice to see someone who's older and a, uh, an established guy have go out and have some success. Done it well, the right way for a long time. Yeah. That doesn't happen. I mean, you can't say that about a lot of guys. He's done it the right way well for a long period of time. Not many guys fall in that category. So, you're you watching guys like Fitzgerald and, you know, all these guys. And, you know, even Brady. You know, we, you know, it's just, I guess, you know, locker room talk or, you know, water cooler talk, you know. But, you know, two generations behind us, like, they'll be the great ones. And you'll say, man, I watched them. Or yeah. I went to a game. Or I played against them. You know, these, these guys are doing it. Hey, Mo, will we say that about things. Romo? <laughs> hey, maybe it's family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> nah. yeah. Hey, yeah. RG three. Go ahead and say something about Roma. RG three, man. What yeah. about it? What, what Dallas picking? What Dallas getting? I don't. Will it? Will it? Um, sell tickets. I, if, if it'll sell tickets or, I guess, enhance the the foolishness that's already taking place. Then yeah, <laughs> like if it find that's the. They seem to be more concerned with you know being in the entertainment business than actually putting together a quality well, with, football. Well, with that being said, shouldn't they have taken Manziel in? I mean, I think... He's from Texas. Well, I, think Texas Jones, too, I think Jerry Jones I think Jerry wanted right. to take Manziel. I think... But RG3 really don't represent Texas. He's you know what I'm saying? Sure. RG3... I don't think everything. of Texas when I, see, when, I, when I see him. Right. When you see Manziel, you see Texas. Why is that? Because he played for Texas a and I guess I no, just... because he's Texas. I can't say what I want to say on air, but wait till we go on. Well, I, I tell you, I think. Well, well is uh, because RG three, he's a, a army kid, right? Right. Yeah, that's what. Like that's kind of. what I know he played at Baylor. That's, I mean, I know he played in Texas, army but Brad. yeah, I don't consider him. He's moved all around. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So like, I don't think of Texas when I think of him. Like Johnny, because uh, the old man. Mm -hmm. uh, that and some more stuff. <laughs> I, I Ray, hope we not. never did get your uh, input on uh, the NFC matchup, man. Yeah. You ain't beat JJ Nelson fastest yeah. 40 yeah. time last year. That's what y'all should be rooting for. Yeah. Man, I'm going fast. Super 40 cam. Time last yeah. year, I tell you Super what, man. Super cam. I'm, 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 you gotta stick with the Lord, man. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I got to go with the Auburn guy, man. I, I like Cam. I like what they're doing. Um, 
But you know what they do? They they do two things that I, I'm an old school football guy. Pound the ball. They run, run the heck ball out and the play football, defense. I love it. And, and they, they play great defense. So many different formations they yeah. run the ball out of. They also. do it, man. They are, they are, they're on 30 formations, but they're going to run piles and counters. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to push you around. And that kind of, you know, that kind of offense and defense, it travels. You know, all situations, all weather. Um, you know, something's not going right, you can turn around, I can hand the ball off, and I can get four or five yards. You know, that that kind of football is tough to stop. Um, now, can they be stopped? I mean, yeah, they, they obviously they can lose, they lost, you know, but I think when they're at their best, <laughs> what are they doing right now? Hey, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All our teams yeah. are sitting yeah. at home watching. Yeah, but we're not throwing them out there. We <laughs> 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 talk about the Giants. <laughs> All right. But my, th my thing is simply this. When the, when the Panthers are at their best, I think their best beats anyone, other, anyone else's best. AFC or NFC. That's, um, so that's your Super Bowl pick. Huh? That's why I go with. It's just hard to believe in Palmer, man. I mean, you see how he came out last week, just all nervous. They were bad last week. They looked awful. They man. were lucky to get out of there. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. They were lucky and to get out And I was room for there. Peppers, man. Peppers one of my favorite players. Mm. And he's thinking about hanging it up now. Yeah. No. Yeah, I love Julius Peppers, man. All these guys, man, like, they, they sneaky old, man. Yeah, for real. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, another one, uh, Roman Harper, uh, still hanging in there. Yeah. Yeah, he has to. This has to be thirteen for him. Fourteen. Yeah. So, yeah. It goes by quick, man. You know. So that that's that's my squad. I'm going with. I roll with the Panthers. More minimal years of eligibility you got, man. Get out there and throw the ball for you, AB, man. <laughs> you ever talking about your, your last high school? The last time you played quarterback? I'm not here to talk about the past. <laughs> <laughs> that that is definitely a story <laughs> off the air. Uh, people want to know. Man. No, it didn't go so.